After a long afternoon in the garden, I ran up to the house and grabbed a few ingredients. All the things that we've been harvesting this afternoon, like these beautiful peppers and the new onions, they made me think of a recipe and I thought of it this morning. I pulled out some wild venison. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grill up that wild venison and I'm going to do a classic. I'm going to do a wild venison Philly cheesesteak. The great thing about wild game is that if you really want to make it palatable and interesting, it's sometimes best to use a recipe that everybody's familiar with and it'll hit them right in the crave button. You'll see that I've already started the fire and the important thing there is I don't want to grill over open flame. So anytime you're outside, you want to make sure that you start the fire anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour in advance. Make sure that you get that nice white hot coals after the the wood burns down and then we'll be ready to season this beautiful venison and get it on that grill. Now while I started this fire with some pine needles and some dry pine, that's not enough to sustain it. What I've got is I've got a good hardwood. This is ash, could be maple, could be walnut, any one of these. But you'll notice I did another thing. I started by preheating the cast iron. So I'm going to get the peppers and onions and garlic and everything into this pan. But I want to make sure that when I do start that it's ripping hot so that it's ready to go. And now that I've got my venison seasoned, listen, I'm just going to do salt and pepper. I could use spices, but this is going to be so good. It's such a premium cut of venison. I want to taste it. I want it to be absolutely wild in flavor. A couple of the ingredients you never want to forget in a Philly cheesesteak are the sliced provolone and the Amorosa style buns. Now those Amorosa style buns are named after a bakery in Philly that first started making them. And when you slice them in half, that nice crusty bread is perfect for one thing, mopping up all of that flavor. Now let's have a quick look at this. You can see that that venison is starting to crisp up. One of the things that you make a mistake with all the time, I used to do it all the time myself, is you want to have a look at what's going on underneath after you get that meat on the grill. When you flip this over, you want to make sure, number one, that it's got lots of charring on there. That charring and the flavor that comes from the ash burning is where you're going to get the intense flavor and the benefit from cooking outside. 
The other thing you want to do is when you make the cats are going crazy. I think it was as soon as I pulled out the provolone, they want it in. Uh, the other thing you want to make sure to do is to give the uh, peppers and onions enough time to develop flavor as well. That sautéing is going to bring out all kinds of natural sweetness, and all of these flavors together are going to make the most incredible sandwich you've ever made outdoors. I've got two slices of provolone for each sandwich, but I've got another one because you can never have enough cheese. And the great thing about putting the cheese on when it's on the pan is the cheese acts like the glue. The other thing I love to do is just to take and tent that beautiful Amarosa roll over top. Any of the steam that's escaping right now is going to heat up that bun. And as soon as that cheese is melted, I'll take the spatula, tuck it underneath, and put it inside that bun to make it beautifully warm. So it's the perfect bite and gives that venison the perfect canvas to be able to be enjoyed outside.